We're a family of five traveling uh, for one year through Europe in our beautiful camper truck. We'd be happy to show you around. Let's uh, make a tour. We came up with the plan to leave our life in the Netherlands behind for a year in 2020, I think. And we used most of 2021 to start preparing for the trip. We sold our house and had this truck built. The basis is an old fire truck from Switzerland. We imported it. Um, it's a 1999 Mercedes-Benz 1531, meaning it's a 50 ton truck, 300 and a bit horsepower. And it was converted. We took everything, obviously everything fire truck, we took it off. And this box was built on top to turn it into uh, our uh, camper truck. The original size of the wheelbase was prolonged for one meter because uh, it, was a, it was a lot shorter and that wouldn't fit the box that we needed. So uh, we had it prolonged by a meter and uh, then it was fit to, uh, to, build a, to build a box on top of it. But I'll, I'll show that later. Like I said, it's a 340 horsepower truck, V6 10 liter engine. So it's very, very strong. Takes, up, takes us up any hill that we want, any, any off-road that we're doing. It's, a, it's an all-wheel drive for four by four. Which, uh, which brings us everywhere we want to go. Uh, the disadvantage is it does take a lot of fuel, about uh, uh, 30 liters per 100 kilometers. So that's actually a big part of our travel budget, but it was calculated and uh, we get a lot of fun for that in return. Um, so the truck was already um, a, a double cabin. We were looking for a double cabin uh, because we have three kids we're traveling five people and um, first we actually we investigated if we could have a like what what what's called a sleep cabin like the one and a half they also call it and then where the bed is we would take a little bench but eventually decided on the double cabin because it has so much more space for the kids um, we took the uh, the original firefighting seats out we bought these boxes for books. We tried to use as much space everywhere as we could for all the stuff that we have. A lot of books, toys, obviously, for the, for the children. This is originally a one and a half cabin that was cut in half by uh, the firm that turned it into a fire truck. And you can actually see the extra part that they put in between. So they just cut it, used the back part and widened it a little bit, which also makes this door aluminium and this door fiber. So it's so just a little detail. It was done by the firm uh, Brendle or Brendle. It's a, a Swiss Swiss firm making fire trucks. But the only thing reminding us of uh, it being a fire truck now is the red details, because obviously it was painted. The best spot in the house, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, this is uh, we're very high up when we're driving. It's a truck, obviously, not a not a, a van or a car. And uh, it is a big, bit big, especially for small cities and, and small towns and narrow streets. But then again, the advantage is that other people usually give us a lot of space uh, when, we, when we're driving around. And uh, it's not as big as one might think. We get into most spots that other camper vans get into, most campings, campgrounds, uh, or also uh, off-road. We can go pretty much any, anywhere. What are the dimensions? Um, it's a little over eight and a half meters long in total, 255 wide, almost 380 high. That is a little bit higher than I anticipated when we were starting to build it, but uh, it turns out it's not really a big problem. It wasn't originally an automatic gearbox, it's a, a post-built uh, gearbox by the Swiss also by uh, when they turned it into a fire truck. We have not only an engine brake, but also a proper retarder, a retarder I think it's called. With, uh, which really breaks, uh, uh, it breaks really well when we're driving uh, in, the, in the hills and in the mountains. That's really a big, uh, big help. And uh, one funny detail is that this lever here is actually the same as this lever here, which would be the, uh, the, the parking brake, the, uh, the air brake. And it has an extra one because this, in Switzerland, this was also used as a, um, as a teaching vehicle. So the, um, the, the, the instructor could actually also break with this one, but I never told my wife because she's, I'm afraid she will actually use it. Now she will watch. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can also turn it off by this switch. It is turned off, by the way, because I don't want anyone uh, to accidentally uh, um, 
touch that because it will actually break very, very hard once you uh, flip it all the way. And how much mileage did you have when you bought it and how much do you have now? It is, uh, when we bought it, it's about uh, 35,000 kilometers and it has now 53,000 kilometers uh, on the clock. And how much did it cost to buy? Uh, the truck, we bought it for about 40,000 euros when it was imported uh, from Switzerland. That was already a little bit more than I had budgeted for a second-hand truck. Uh, but we bought it in a time that, uh, in, we bought it during COVID when a lot of people were actually buying trucks to convert. The camper vans were getting really, really popular and really expensive as well. Um, and apparently these trucks, these, these age trucks get uh, more and more scarce as well. So prices are going up. And uh, the, the reason these pre-1990, pre-1999 trucks is that um, they're very mechanical. There's hardly any, any electronics on this. So uh, it's, it's fairly easy to, to maintain for yourself um, and uh, nothing too much electronics that can break down. Yeah, and this is and the I year? Like that. This is 1999. The whole roof rack was was, uh, was custom built for us by a very professional welder. And I think he did a great job of, of building this really great looking tough roof rack. Um, these, these A style bars are really a great help when we are driving through a little bit of a narrow bush so that the, the branches don't actually swipe on the, on, the, on the windshield but get caught by this. It's a really great help. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to have it any other way. And then uh, we have a lot of space on top. We don't really use it right now. We had planned on actually putting another box on there, but in the end decided not to, and we don't really miss that space. Around the truck, we put as many boxes and, uh, and storage space as possible. Obviously, because uh, by law, you have to close this, this space between the wheels to prevent anything from going under. So uh, we used it, uh, to, to put it to close that space with boxes. This is the, the, the black water tank. We don't have a separate gray water tank. So this tank contains the water from the, from the toilet, the shower and the kitchen. It all assimilates in this, uh, in this tank and we, uh, we empty it once a week, maybe once every 10 days if, uh, if we're not using too much water. Uh, the, the toilet is it's, it's a grinding toilet. So it, it just mixes everything with water and it all comes in, in here and uh, we have to find a spot to, uh, to empty this. And is it easy to find a spot, especially now in Baltic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most campgrounds, we usually change between um, spots in, in the wild and, uh, and off campgrounds like, like here, we're, uh, we're uh, somewhere on the edge of Riga in the middle of nowhere, just free camping. And then every once in a while, we'll take a, a campground or a camper van ground or anything. And usually they have a, they have a, a spot to, uh, to empty it. Or sometimes in, uh, in petrol stations as well. We've never had any problems finding, uh, finding uh, spots or, or drive way around to find a spot. We've, uh, we've never had any problems with that. And then we have a number four actually of these boxes that were uh, custom built to fit, uh, to fit our dimensions. And everyone has their own purpose. This one is for, um, in here are the, are the batteries for the truck. We have two separate sets of batteries. These are for the, uh, for the engine for the truck. The batteries for the living quarters are inside. Um, and here are all the tools that we need. There's a, a toolbox, some extra stuff. This one has some boxes with uh, spare, a lot of spare um, shoes, a couple of big sturdy wooden blocks for if we're not completely level. So I use these wooden blocks. I found these in, uh, in Greece, I think, or no, in Spain on some construction site and asked if I could take them because the, the, the regular plastic ramps are not sturdy enough for this truck. And this weighs 11 and a half tons. So uh, we need uh, these blocks. These blocks work very well under the Dutch law. This is not a truck. It's actually a, reg a regular vehicle registered as a, uh, as a camper van. So um, that also means we have to pay road taxes as a regular vehicle, which goes by weight and weighing in at 11 and a half tons, that's uh, a lot of tax. Luckily enough, being a camper van, we only have to pay for three months a year. So that's a little discount. But to drive it, you still need a truck license. Obvi obviously, yes. 
Yes, so it's a bit of a so it's a bit of a gray area because uh, if we run into road signs saying forbidden for over seven and a half tons, we can't go in. If it says forbidden for trucks, we legally can go in because it's a temp camper. The spare tire we put under here. You see a lot of trucks that have them up there, but it's more difficult to get them down, and uh, that leaves space for our bikes. Uh, we bought a regular camper van bike rack with the advantage this being a uh, one that we can actually lower and then I can put the bikes up. It was supposed to be on the uh, campers to lower it all the way to the ground so that you can put your bikes on really, really easy. And I thought that if it be on this height, I can, would still manage to put the bikes on. Here's another one of these boxes, which is a little bit more of a mess. Here's a small barbecue that we don't use too much. And actually in here is also our outside kitchen. Inside and outside we cook on LPG so that we can just get it at the pump. We would have to open a, a valve and, well, you can actually tell where the priorities of the kits are. Because we need an endless supply of marshmallows for the campfire. And how big gas tank do you have? Uh, 42, I think, and then because the maximum filling is about 80%, it gets just under 40, something like that, or 44. We use it for cooking uh, inside, outside. So that's the gas stuff inside and the oven inside. The, the fridge and the freezer run on electricity. The water heater and the air heater for, for heating the, the cabin itself is a uh, diesel. So the entire box was made up of uh, 60 millimeter um, sandwich panels. So it's inside, outside is polyester and uh, with uh, foam and uh, inside and uh, strengthened with wood core around the door mainly and for, for extra reinforcement. In, in this case, the, the, the box was made up of gluing together all the panels and then adding the protections afterwards. This is fiber and this is steel reinforcements that was put on the fiber afterwards. This is actually one, one whole compartment. Um, this, this part is one and this was glued on top of that and then they could actually also fit the railing which goes all the way over and to the front. And the reason that it's on top as well is it's a little protection for the, um, for the solar panels. This is another hatch for the garage, which is uh, quite full now. There's two bikes in there for the kids, some toys and a small folding table for, uh, for in the campground. The last box is a little bit hidden under the stairs. And this is where uh, we keep the, all the, some of the outside toys, like the beach toys, football, uh, a cart and a lot of chairs, like these folding chairs that we use uh, for, uh, for camping. The petrol tank is um, 280 liters. So uh, we uh, obviously we won't drive it all the way empty. So we usually tank when we, when we go to the petrol station, we usually take in between 220 to 50 liters uh, of petrol, which will set us back uh, anywhere between 400 and 500 euros. Um, and that, that will give us another uh, 700 kilometers, I guess. No, a little bit more. So the the box is mounted on the on the chassis with uh, what's called a just a regular rail on rail system. So it's uh, uh, it's the, the subframe rests directly on the chassis, and with uh, it's it's fixed in the back. And then there's a couple of springs going forward, which would give us the the, the movement necessary in the in the terrain. I studied this three point, four point systems, um, but decided that the rail on rail was the, the most, the easiest system and the most sturdy system. So we chose that. But that also meant that we had to find a way that it was more difficult to put the ladder in the, in the subframe. So we had to find a way to, to get rid of the ladder. Um, and the way we're doing that now is that we actually slide it to the side like that. And I fix it like that and it just goes over this box and over the tank and, uh, and like that. And the way we did this, or I say we, but the builders uh, came up with the idea to, um, to use the turning mechanism for a, um, for a regular camper seat where the, where the seats can, can actually turn in, into a swivel seat, exactly. They use the base plate of that to make, the, make this uh, uh, thing turn. And then we also use this 
this beam it rests on the box as well to uh, distribute the, the, the weight a little bit between hanging on the swivel and also resting on the box. I hope you find this video informative and if you want to see the full tour of this truck then go ahead on this link. See you in the next one, bye! Welcome inside. We wanted a, a big seating area that could